first pick. Had to fight for what I got, I got a feeling I deserve it. Now I'm only moving with a purpose. The people showing love, but I ain't broken to the surface. Damn. Never had a chance, was a no name. All season started working on my post game. Now I seen your readers at the phone when they alone. I break them off and send them home. Got a game with no change. Saying I'm a flop, that's an insult, chill. Rolling up a J in a raw pace still. Send a shot, y'all ain't never got a kill. Kick rock. Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's your boys from We All, we're, we're All In Podcast. I'm, I'm your host, Mike. I'm John. Big Country Mike Mooney. We're gonna bring you into talking about some some different things we've we've talked about all week, and to try to get you guys caught up. We had a little bit of a break to try to re-energize ourselves. And you really rocking the gear for your teams oh right now, God, aren't you, bro? I got you guys started this. You guys wanted me to bring the muscle. You got that chain. Show that chain off. Show show show, 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 show the chain. chain. That's show the that chain, chain right there. Bro, show that right there. <laughs> 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 well, anyways, we I do we do want to get started today with a uh, little bit irritated with this this whole mvp um and the whole award it's it, on its own um been arguing with a bunch of people on on tiktok and other social media platforms about how this how this award has become qb biased um it's it's just it's frustrating me um to an extent to where it's it's now affecting my life i think it's affected me all day long <laughs> <laughs> like legitimately affected my life, my thinking process, my working ability. Um, sleep, sleep. No, can't not shower not properly. Not yet. I don't need to sleep yet. Oh. I'm hoping you guys fix that problem. It doesn't haunt my dreams. But anyways, people need to let us know. Uh, I think we really, the NFL as a whole, really needs to look in at adding a QB of the year award to sort of maybe take some of that bias from the MVP and allow it to go when my, my theory, I don't know if it's the real meaning of this MVP is the best player in football or is it the best player on their team? I mean, what, what, how does this, how, how, how do they rate this award or how do they go about awarding it? Cause it seems to be a joke. Uh, most of the time MVP is usually uh, the one player that if they were taken away from the team, the team probably wouldn't perform that well. But yet they don't they don't take that into effect on, I guess losing teams. So if you got a um, let's just say the Colts with Jonathan Taylor, they won nine games this year. They missed the playoffs. They had a, a debacle. We all know last week. You take Jonathan Taylor away from them. Are they a, are they the Lions? Are they a two or three win team? Are they picking in the top five without Jonathan Taylor? I I believe without Jonathan Taylor, I don't think the Colts are really relevant. And I'm not. I'm not trying to take anything away from Carson Wentz because the guy had a heck of a year. Um, but Jonathan Taylor really is the driving force of that team. So I feel like if he's not on that team, if he's not doing what he's doing, then they're not relevant. I don't even think they were having having a chance to even make the playoffs without Jonathan Taylor. That's how important he is to that team. But as you were touching on, the MVP is the most valuable player of the league, not the team, the league. Because as we know, we brought up before um, – in 2003, Steve McNair shared the MVP award with Peyton Manning. And looking at his stats, statistically, there was a 2,000-yard rusher that year in Jamal Lewis. Now, I feel in 2003, you take Jamal off that team, Baltimore's not that relevant. But it doesn't even matter as far as team success and, and their record, which I know they take into account. But a 2,000-yard rusher at that time, I think he was only the fifth person to ever do it in the history of the game. And yet Steve McNair with 3,500 passing yards, and I understand he had 24 touchdowns and he had like seven interceptions. Jamal Lewis deserved that, but we ran into that last year with Aaron Rodgers and Derrick Henry, who also had a 2,000-yard performance. Well, you know, speaking of running backs, someone just commented and said uh, running backs don't matter. They'd be fine without JT. I mean, can't really make the who, arguments. Who was, running it? Back. who was it that said that? David. Uh, Dave Maurer, yeah. Turtle. Shout out to Turtle there. Um, what were you saying? I, I mean, you can't really say running backs don't matter. I mean, if you got a good running running back back here, it's really going to help that offense, take some pressure off that quarterback. Well, yeah, tell me that Ladinian Tomlinson isn't on the Chargers and they're relevant. I mean, come on, guys. Like, well, I mean, they're, you, they're I mean if, you, if you turn around and look at it, if you, I mean, just make it recent. If you take Leonard Fournette off of the Bucks and you put all of that into Tom Brady's hands, you think that they're, they're, you know, yes, he might be able to pick them apart, but they they become one dimensional with no back back there. Well, go ahead and look at Miami, who needed hey, a running back on, this year. Drew said, hey, what's I mean, up? you look at the teams 
that didn't have – look at the teams that lost. Look at the Cleveland Browns. When Nick Chubb went out and Kareem Hunt went out, that did not help them with De'Aaron Johnson. If you look at the Washington Redskins, when Antonio Gibson went down, they weren't that good. Look at the, well, are the, uh, nine, are the, the nine are the nineties Cowboys good without Emma Smith? Are no, they a Super Bowl team? No. Are they a Super Bowl winning franchise without no. Emma Smith? That team was built. Are the, around are the Denver Emmett. Broncos won in back to back without Terrell Davis? No. Especially didn't he put up a two thousand yard performance in one of those Super Bowl yeah, runs? One the, yeah, one of them, yes. Yeah. So I mean you can you can if you if you want to say that the running back isn't relevant, look at the teams that don't have a good back and they're they're not relevant. If you, if like I said, if Miami this year had a good back they would have been they they probably would be in the playoffs. If the Buffalo Bills had a legitimate back, they'd probably be doing a lot better than they already are. Everything with them is Josh Allen. All right. But if you give them a good back, I mean, sky's the limit. Uh David said uh Titans uh Titans ripped off uh, wins with Dante Foreman and Dontrell Hilliard. Well, they weren't the key they weren't the key success to that to that win streak either. Though Ryan Tannehill started playing better football and everybody knows that that needed to happen for them to succeed anyways. We've seen when they just run. I mean, they just carried Derrick Henry last year into the playoffs. Team started keen on that. Yes, he still ripped off a few couple hundred-yard games, but they didn't make the Super Bowl. They needed Ryan Tannehill to play better football. This guy, Russell Bender, says O-line oh, makes Uncle Russell. good players. Uh, uh, Uncle Russell. Well, Shout-out to he, Uncle he, Russell. He made Thanks a comment watching, before man. that, Joe Burrow. I think he thought we were talking about who would be a good v, uh, MVP, and he said uh, Joe Burrow. Right. Why? Because his line sucks, and he still wins. Right. He, a valid point. He was sacked the most in the league by any quarterback, and he still put up well, fantastic I, don't, stats. I think if Joe Burrow's not in the final five, it's a ripoff. We didn't put him on the page because I, I, I put our poll page on there. I'm as biased. Um, no, I put it on there because <laughs> that's, that's the five that they had as the highest chances to win but the I MVP. Wanna, I want to touch on what Russell said with – the O line is what makes good players. Well, it was what three, four years ago, maybe five years ago. Ben Roethlisberger was the most sacked quarterback in the league that year, and they still made the playoffs. Well, you yeah, think about it. O no, line's O line's bad in Cincinnati right now, and Cincinnati's well, a legitimate not, Super Bowl. Right, so I don't think the O line makes good players. I, I don't know if he's saying it makes good players, or they're saying there's he's saying there's good offensive. Well, I'm just saying players, what, he said. what he said. What he said was O line well, makes good players. Does he, but is I don't, he no? Is he refer, that. Is he referring that to the line to the to the running back alone? <laughs> Yeah. I think that's what he means by that because a good o- offensive line does make a running back a little makes better. It makes it easier. Than yeah, it makes, makes it him better. But makes if you're him... a good back, because look at Joe well, Nick. Well, Barry Sanders had some bad O lines, but still put up numbers. Yeah, but, but we he do was know a different... he had good teams too. Well, but but if you went to 49ers, for instance, they do run. They do bring in running backs by committee, and it's because their offensive line is so dominant. I so they that. can they can run. Isaac said. Uh, he wants to know about how, what New England does without having a decent back. He said you and him had touched about the Miami thing. Yeah, we. I'm telling you what, New England's not a good football team without the decent backs that they have. I think they that that was another turning point for New England. Also, was they actually did land a, a good back. I mean, the, and how how does it? Answer that for us, Isaac. How? What do you mean? What do you mean by that when you give that to us? Are you meaning in Brady's early years when they actually did have legitimate backs, or is it just stating like this year? I mean, because I th- this this award has become QB biased. It that's, is it is what it is. It doesn't matter. I like I've told you before. You see Russell's comment. I I I brought this up to Isaac at work. Um, to, to reference the Dallas Cowboys, um, back in 2016, Zeke finished in the top five in MVP. But yet, Dak Prescott won the Offensive Player of the Year. I'll never, I'll never understand that in my entire life. How the MVP can be given to somebody, but yet there's a different player for Offensive Player of the Year. When 90% of the time the MVP is on offense, so how can you have legitimately two different players win that award? It doesn't make any sense. If you're the MVP and you're on offense, aren't you the Offensive Player of the Year? Because for the most part, why didn't Aaron well, Rodgers win Offensive Player of the Year last year? I believe they gave that to Henry. But he had 48 touchdowns, four picks. Why wouldn't he still be considered Offensive Player of the Year? Uh, uh, Russell Bender said Bengals in the Super Bowl throw line better, period. I think the I think Cincinnati does have a better record if their own line's better. Oh, I, I, do, I, do, I, do, I do. I do. You know, I agree you know, with that. I, I do agree yeah. with that. And then Isaac said this year. He was talking about this year for the backs. <sighs> they, they're better, and that made that team better. It made Mac Jones' life a lot easier as a rookie quarterback. With with them backs, it helped. They they. The, the New England Patriots' success has not come off Mac Jones. It's come off a solid run game and one of the better defenses in all of football. 
which has kind of been the history of the Patriots. Even that's what with Bill Tom Belichick Brady does, does with rookies. He, that's what he does anyways. Right. Russell said Cowboys had the best O-line in the 90s when, you know, when they won the Super Bowls. He's got a great point. They, they of course a, they did, they, but they you can't knock what Emmitt did just because he had a good O-line. No, you can't. I mean, what he I did don't think he's knocking really that. Good. I think he's saying it does. It does. I do agree that the O-line does make jobs no, we all, easier. No, we, we all agree that it makes it easier, but I don't think it makes players because Emmitt's still going to be Emmitt. I mean, he went to Arizona where a far less talented offensive line and still put up 1,000 yards no, his first year and 989 yards his second year. And, so, and, and I mean, a, a, an offensive line can be great uh, uh, for, for the rushing offense, but then be awful. Yeah, it could be of a course. great run block. Of yeah, course. But, but, a line but pass blocking pass. Yes, be of absolutely awful. You know, and Cincinnati's offensive line is, good, is a good point because they're awful at pass blocking, but, but the run block, they've been really good at. Joe Mixon's got some pretty good holes. He's but my, my point is, whether, my is whether they're, they're not good absolute, at blocking they're or not, not they're, they're, still, they're still a good back regardless. They're, they're not absolutely horrible at pass blocking either. We Dude. can't act like Cincinnati's line is absolutely I mean, they're the horrible. Worst, they're the worst line in the NFL. They've allowed the most sacks. Yeah, but that could be – sacks are not just generated off offensive line either. I mean, Burrow can hold the ball too long or he could roll out a little bit and get hit off the edge. I mean, maybe he wasn't – I get what you're saying. No line needs improvement, but at the same time, you don't throw for 4,600 yards and 30 some touchdowns and say that your offensive line is absolutely garbage. Yeah, because if you looked at stats for a quarterback play, you'd look at Cleveland and say they had a horrible offensive line when actually their offensive line is rated pretty good in pass and in, in blocking for run. It's uh, just we have a horrible quarterback in Cleveland, but that's a whole other subject. Yeah, people. we are. That's a whole uh, not going to do that. that. So, but you know, so a couple, the, the, couple the, people here, real quick. Uh, Isaac said New England wouldn't have one half or more of their games without a run game. You know, I, I agree it's with true. that. It's true. It's true. And then Aaron Kasky, uh, look at Barry Sanders' line. Right. That's what I brought up. You, you know, know. And then, but we uh, can't. We can't. We. We. I don't want to do. I don't want to go there. I don't want to do that. I don't want to bring in all-time great running backs and say that an offensive line. Yes, it would have made their career better, but these guys were going to be these guys whether that offensive line was good or not. And that's they're, what I was they're once in that's a generation talents. I mean. Barry Sanders was going to do that with anybody. Yes, if you gave him a great offensive line, sure, the rushing record's probably not touched. But at the same time, that's what that's the cards that were dealt to him, and he but still made Getting back to the point of the whole MVP thing, I believe that if you have a quarterback of the year award, which the NFL doesn't, and they did, it would open up the MVP for more people, especially defensive side, like we talked about Robert Quinn. Who had 19 sacks this yeah, year. Yeah, the most underrated 19 sacks. of 31-year-old defensive end puts up 19 sacks, and nobody's even talking about it. But if we had well, the MVP and, and was open to everybody, he would he would probably be in the running with T.J. Watt. Well, I think a reason why a lot a lot of a lot of reason why people's not talking about Quinn is because of T.J. Watt's kind of overshadowing that everybody's eyes was on him versus. But they're not. But they're I mean, even, even during the, while it was going on, we still don't hear anything about Robert. They're Quinn. not even putting Watt in the MVP conversation. Right. He's no, he's and right. my personal opinion is MVP needs to go to Cooper Cup. I'm not going to change my stance on that. I think that that dude rightfully was the best player in all of football this year. If he doesn't put these numbers up, we're not talking. He he he's the most talked about, which I've always thought MVP should be the best player in the NFL, not the best player on the best team or the best or if you take this player away, it makes that team crap. The the MVP should be the the MVP of of the NFL. Most valuable player of the NFL. And going back to last year with Rodgers winning it, I mean, he did something that's never been done with his touchdown-interception ratio. We've never seen that before. But on the other hand... He's doing it again this year. <laughs> right, he's doing it again. And on the other hand, Derrick Henry last year running for 2,000 yards was the seventh time it's ever been done in the history. of the, That's over 100 years of football, and it's only been done the seventh time. And yet, he doesn't win it. Going back, like I said before, in 2003, Jamal Lewis does it. 2,000 yards rushing. And I think at that time, it was the fifth time it was ever been done. Didn't win it. Gave it to Steve McNair to share with Peyton Manning. Yeah, I don't know how you get that share out of that anyway. I don't I either. That up a I, don't, I don't get that. I don't get. I don't. There was better. There was a receiver. Ter, ter, uh, Terry Holt. Uh, right. He had 1,600 or 1,700 receiving yards and double-digit touchdowns. He averaged 100 yards a game. Hundred, I think 170 yards a game. He didn't win MVP. Hey, Over Steve McNair. Uh, there was a question. Aaron Kasky. Ask uh, what do you guys think about the no sack they gave Watt against Baltimore to beat. Yeah, I knew that. I knew that was going to get brought up. Uh, <laughs> we talked about this for a couple of days. I, I whole, I agree with it. The the center fumbled the snap. It hits off his butt and falls just directly behind him. To me, a sack. If 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 Ty if Hunley is bobbling that ball and drops it and then picks it up and tries to run, that's a sack to me. But because the bobbled snap, but this ball hit him on his on his rear end and fell to the ground pretty much. So it was a. A fumble. I mean, I don't know if you guys agree, but in my eyes, 
it was a fumble by the center. It's a fumbled snap yeah, by yeah, the center. Yeah. It's not fumbled by Huntley. It was it's I think it was the right call. Does it suck to be TJ Watt? Well, maybe you should have played a little harder. God, he had such a good season. 22 and a half sacks. Dude, he had, didn't he, had break such it, a, he had such a good season. That's still pretty remarkable. 22 and a half. You oh, didn't break it, but you tied it. I mean, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I'd be pretty happy. I mean, do you guys agree with, with that? I mean, I do. do you guys think it still should, because the tackle was the quarter, they tackled the quarterback behind the line of scrimmage, does it still get? I feel that even if the center fumbled the ball and the quarterback recovered it, he's still he's still in the mode to pass the ball, so he still sacked him. But he never he never dropped back the pass. Right, no, he just he recovered the ball and, and he, he tackled him, but it was the quarterback who recovered it, and he's still in the pocket. So, so if the technically run, it's so a if sack. The, so if the running back fumbles it and the quarterback picks it up and takes off running with it and he gets tackled No, because I think the, the running back had the ball first on offense well, after the snap. Well, the quarterback would have had it first. He had to hand it to the running back. So I, I mean, <laughs> to fumble it, he had the ball and fumbled is, it. The quarterback picks it up, it's a running play at that point uh, to me. Russell said this is kind of a little off topic, what we were just talking about, but he said uh, wide receivers can make quarterbacks better too. You know, look at Culpepper with Moss when Mo when Moss left. That's a whole other subject you we know, don't want to get into right now because that that opens up a floodgate of. of that's all right. We can. Things. I mean, we can. We can still. I thought. Because I'm not going to say that Jerry Rice made Joe Montana, and I'm not going to say Montana made Rice. I think they were two great players on one team. He's not. And they helped each other. That's not the point he's making. He's just saying a wide receiver can make a quarterback look better is what well, he's we, saying we we had this discussion and uh, we we i think we agreed that it is it is that is there is cases of that there is there cases is. where receivers have made quarterbacks way better than what they actually were i mean we could probably go back to how matt flynn got paid when he dropped like seven touchdowns on the dallas cowboys and then went on to seattle and was poopy so i mean there are instances i think where receivers are they do prolong quarterbacks careers and keep them in a lot they make them better than what they are <laughs> uh, uh russell we, we can't ask mike that question because he's biased he no, would say dallas no. what do you what do you <clears throat> don't say what you got to say <laughs> he said who wins cowboys or 49ers game well we're gonna get to we're that getting we're to getting that. we're getting this is what we're getting ready to go uh, on we just west wanted to say to you uh hey fuck faces what mike why are you wearing a beanie with a cutoff, hot arms and cold ears. Yeah. No, we're gonna we're gonna talk about why that was. If you guys would have been in this kitchen when these guys were making fun of my work outfit because I was still in my work uniform, so I come down in my you know my my custom made Tony Romo jersey, and these guys made fun of me. So I pouted and went back to my bedroom. Literally I, pouted like listen, a child. Guys, listen, I just rocked out my you know this last time you guys might see this is Ben Simmons Sixers jersey. You know that's my boy. We'll rep him out all day. He's probably not gonna be there anymore, but you know I'm gonna rep him out one time. Shit. <laughs> Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but we're gonna go. Well, well, that that was something we just. I was. I, it's just been on my brain all day. Shout out to Second Born for our opening song. People, give us give us your thoughts on that opening song if you heard it. Um, it's one of my good friends. I play basketball with it on Saturdays. Um, he should be trying. He's trying to become uh, a rapper on his own, dude. I I respect him. He 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 quit his job, went to Columbus, got a studio. The dude's doing things. That's one of his first songs. It sort of fits our. Our, our up our up that we're our, our our upbringing that we want we want people to know that we're here for real and we actually want to make something of this we're all pursuing dreams that's what we want man ultimately we're we're trying to do something that we've always wanted to do and us three blue collar people i mean this is this is an honor for you guys just to sit down and, and listen to us and give us comments too um so i just want to shout out second born if you guys do he does have a tiktok at second born get on there and listen to him i know it's i don't know if people like rap or don't like rap but He's a young kid trying to make his way. I think um, it was nice of him to let us use his song yeah, and too. It, but and, and and I thought it, you know, it's a good song. And there's if you guys can follow him, he's got other good stuff too. If you want to check him out, um, let's move on to that. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna go into this. We're gonna do our playoff predictions from first round to. By the time we're done with this, we want to have a Super Bowl. So um, let's go ahead and let's get into this and see see what you guys and see what you guys want to agree on or disagree on. So, um, first game, guys. What, what's our first game on the slate here? It'd be, let's do the... Uh, we'll do the uh, Chiefs-Pittsburgh game. Chiefs-Pittsburgh. Chiefs-Pittsburgh. That's 7-2, right? 7-2. Uh, we, we can go in and talk about this, but I think Big Ben could make... could He could shock the world here. I mean, if, the, if there is one thing this dude's going to do, this dude's going to show up. I, I made this comment earlier in the year where I told um, Mike Mooney over there, Big Country... 
that the Steelers would make the playoffs this year. He called me crazier than hell. He said I was <laughs> stupid. That's what he said. His exact words was, you're stupid. <sighs> I think he actually yelled it at me. He might have threw some at me at the same time. I think I did, too. Um, I think I did. I called it. I said it. I said they were going to sneak their way in. Even And it was actually technically right after the tie with the Lions. I said I wouldn't be shocked if the Pittsburgh Steelers went on a run and got in. You know, I, with that game, I'm going to kind of – Shock! I, I think Pittsburgh's going to beat Kansas City. I call the upset on that one, and and it, my reasoning for that is everybody's saying, "Oh, do tell." Well, everybody's saying, "Oh, well, you know, Ben sucks. Ben sucks." Well, don't ever underestimate him in the playoffs. One, and then they got Mike Tomlin. He's arguably one of the best coaches in the NFL, and and the team is going to rally, knowing that this could possibly be Ben's last final year. The team's going to rally around him, try to give him that final Super Bowl, like they did last year. You know, but it wasn't his final year. It wasn't his final year. Well, I mean, they were but rallying, this, but but it still, it, I still think that Pittsburgh can pull off this upset. Now, if you watched, I don't know if y'all watched Ben's interview. Yeah, we the, seen the that. other day, you know, and he he even said it's gonna be tough. Yeah, we're gonna go out there and we're gonna have some fun. He said they're better than us. Oh, That's yeah, what he said. Yeah, which, which a lot of he's taking a lot of hate for that, which I don't understand why. The man was honest after what year twenty. <clears throat> I mean, I mean, he can he's allowed to say hey. <laughs> or is he trying to play a mind game? Yeah, or is he? Yeah, the the Kansas City Chiefs are clearly better than the Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, so. absolutely, no <laughs> argument there. But I, I still think I can see Pittsburgh coming in with an upset and and beating Kansas City. I, and there, another reason why I say that is Kansas City's going to come in and think the same thing. We're a better team. We're going to go in here. And we're going to tromp these guys. So they're going to come in. I think they can come in overconfident and not realize. I mean, how many times have we seen that? Seen a way better team come in, overconfident, and get totally dominated by the the underdog because, well, they they overlooked them. Twelfth man is going to play a factor in Casey. I'm taking Casey. I think Casey wins it. I think it's a close game, something like 24-21, Um. So I I'm I'm going. I can see your argument, but I'm going. K. I'm going. I'm going KC. So Kansas City, we, we all know, know that. Their defense has come on in the last part of the season. Their defense really got tough, and um, they jumped up there uh, defensively. And we all know their offense started coming along too, and Patrick started playing better. So we know, like you said, clearly Kansas City is the better team. So <clears throat> my winner, the who I'm picking, is the Pittsburgh Steelers. So we're, what we're doing here, guys, is we're going to go best two out of three. And so that the, is going to be our pick. So the reason the reason I'm I'm saying it though is because <laughs> good clarification. I had to let that I had to let that in so people know that it, it's going to be it's not going to be a bias thing. It's going to be majority rules. So we are going to move on with Pittsburgh, but we're going to let Mooney finish on that. Just so you guys know that I think it's I really I, honestly I really think it's one reason and one reason only. That's because T.J. Watt. I think he is going to make life hell for Patrick Mahomes. That's what I think. I think that's their secret weapon on that defense to shut that down. That's possible. I think he's going to play a factor. Yeah. Oh, he's going to play a huge factor. I yeah. just think. I just think. But the thing is, Mahomes is so dude. So he's such a mobile quarterback. He's thing, good on he the is. Feet. The thing yeah. that scares me with the Chiefs, to be honest, I'm, I picked the Chiefs because I just I just think they're that much better. Um, but the thing that scares me with the Chiefs is, without Clyde's Hilaire, they struggle, and we've seen them struggle. Again, la- again, last week with without him with Denver with Denver, and then we seen him once he got hurt um, with Cincinnati or the week before Cincinnati. They got they got beat up on. They gave up a big lead in the second half because they no longer have a run game. So if they have to rely on dropbacks, I think Pittsburgh really could make some noise and possibly upset these guys. I think that's guys. why because then they key in on it. That's why TJ's so, just going to have so a field you're, day. You're you're agreeing with us now. You're changing. No, I, I think if it happens. I think if it happens, it shock. It, I don't think it shocks the world, but it doesn't shock me if they do it. I still think Kansas City's talent alone is it, it can overcome and beat them. I think it's a close game, but I think they ultimately win by. I said, like I said, twenty four seventeen. I think because of Kansas City's one dimensional, they're done. So I we're going to go. Pittsburgh's defense is that good. So we're going to go Pittsburgh in the first matchup. <laughs> you said, shout out to the WWE <laughs> champion Brock Lesnar. <laughs> <laughs> he, he did that last week too, didn't he? I, I think. Um, so what's our next game? We got Pittsburgh. We got Pittsburgh upset. And, um, um, Isaac said Steelers play a run heavy ball control game and try and force turnovers. You know, uh, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, they could do that. Take a lot of pressure off of Ben. Our next, and they got the running back to do you. it too. I got you. you got yeah. Our next game is new England and Buffalo. Isaac's tuning in right here. Isaac wanted to hear this. I know. Isaac so, so far we got this. Pittsburgh going on. Right? We got Pittsburgh okay. going on, which Pittsburgh. they will, they will play Tennessee. They'll play Tennessee. They'll play then. Tennessee yep. in the next round. Okay. 
Um, so we got New England Buffalo <laughs> in oh, Buffalo. Yeah. This here, guys, is where I ultimately believe this is like a this is like a twelve five in March Madness. That these this can literally be an upset with New England. I like I like Buffalo. I really do like Buffalo, but I am I'm going to ride New England here. I think New England goes into Buffalo with Belichick and what they do, and they they I think they get redemption on getting beat just a couple weeks ago. I, I'm gonna have to go with Buffalo. I think Buffalo. I, I think the way they're playing, they're playing really good football, and I I think they just I think they've got New England's number. I think they're gonna pull this one out. Uh, I think they got more of a want for it. Uh, the thing that hurts New England is the rookie quarterback. I think that's going to hurt him a little bit. Not taking any, anything away from him. I, I just think that uh, Josh Allen is going to be a little more prepared, and I think he's going to play really well come that first game in wild card, I think. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. And I think – Well, it depends on if there's snow. I think that because that guy on the sidelines, I cannot doubt him. I can't – and when the playoffs come, he's a whole other monster – so I can't go against New England. I can't. They're, I think they're the more complete team all around, defensively and offensively, than Buffalo is. It's that little thing. Like, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, there you go. <laughs> I just, I can't, I'm not, I don't, I think Belichick will have his boys ready. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think he, he'll be ready. Just, he'll be ready. And He's they, another monster in the playoffs. He just is. He's yeah. a different coach in the playoffs. I think they come in, and and to me, but that's, he's got a different team than what he's normally had coming into the playoffs. He does, but he's not different. He's the yeah, same guy. No, but it also takes good players in the play. You can have the best coach in the world. Well, he's got them. But if you don't have the best players, you're not gonna. And I'm not saying he didn't have the best players. I just don't think that his team is ready to take a deep playoff run. Belichick knows no, how to you know get I mean? his guys to win. He knows yeah, what I think to he, do. I think he can get. I think he. Yeah. I think. I think the lead. The leadership of Bill Belichick will get these guys ready. He is Greg Popovich of the NFL. Like he just gets his team to win. So we got we got New England moving on. I'm assuming one. Isaac is for New England. Isaac's a big New England fan. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. There, you go, <laughs> there you go, Isaac. There you go, Isaac. New England moving on. So our next game is this is this is the game I think this this might this and there's one in the NFC that I think is probably one of the hardest games to choose. Don't you dare! I'm, I'm telling you, people have to realize, and I, and I'm sort of going to steal this because me and Isaac Isaac's here in this. I'm. I, sort of going to take this from him because the point he pointed to me that I didn't think of with Derek Carr is, is, is enough enough with Derek Carr. When, when you people hate on this man from all the drama that Oakland or L or, or Las Vegas Rams had this year from rugs to Gruden to, to everything. And this dude wheeled, he wheeled these guys into the playoffs. I mean, can we can we can we stop the hate on Derek Carr and maybe realize that this Oakland team might have a chance to up upset Cincinnati? Me personally, I I think Raiders got in and it's a great thing for them and their organization, especially what you just said, what they went through all year. Cincinnati's too much for Oakland. Well, I say Oakland, it's Las Vegas. But Cincinnati's too much. Too much. They're they're better defensively and their offense is way more powerful than than Las Vegas. I think I think this is a blowout. I think Cincinnati literally can drop forty or more on them. I think this is a blowout win. I don't even think it's a close game. I don't think it's a blowout. I think it'll be a decent game, but I do see Cincinnati winning. And I'm not just saying this because I'm a Cincinnati fan, but I was reading an article, uh, uh Breeze is gonna be broadcasting that game and he met with Burrow has a little bit of a pass, and he said, "He goes, he said, I feel it." And he goes, "I know it." He goes, "That, that kid has a chip on his shoulder," and, and rightfully so, because a lot of people, you know, even when he was at Ohio State, you, you, a lot of people counted him out. A lot of people, he uh, couldn't stay healthy. It, yeah, and so he he went to LSU, you know, played really well, came into the NFL, and a lot of people, some people said, "Now oh, he wouldn't make it in the NFL," and then he he does well. Then he gets snubbed the Pro Bowl. And now it's probably one of the bigger snubs of the year. I mean, there's other snubs, but that was a big snub of the year. So he's really got in his mind that, man, I'm going to prove these guys that I'm the guy. I'm going to do it. And I think Cincinnati has, like Mooney said, I think the offensive firepower that Cincinnati has, and it arguably got one of the best wide receiving trio in the league between the two. And each one, each receiver brings a different thing to the table. you got uh, Chase, who is a you know, very speedy receiver, you got Higgins, who's that big guy that goes up and gets the ball. Then you got the more smart uh, finesse guy in Boyd, who I think 
he was good. And then you like to say the tight end, you know, and, and Uzama. Uzama. That Mike doesn't yeah, like. Mike doesn't like him. I think Uzama, he, <laughs> he is he a big threat like Kittle or, no, or, or no. Kelsey? No, but but he does good. And, and then he's they a got, good blocker, too. And then Mixon, over the last three times he's played uh, Oakland, well, Las Vegas, I, I'm the same as you. <laughs> Every time he plays the Raiders, uh, he's had very good success. Mixon's just a beast. He, he's had year. very good success against Raiders. Uh, uh, the last three teams, he's at over 100 yards a game in all, all three games, uh, multiple touchdowns. I mean, the dude – Plays well against Oakland. And I don't think Las Vegas defense can match up against all those receivers. I don't think they it's can. It's going to be tough. I think Cincinnati's offense, or defense, I mean, it can step up and play well against oh, yeah. against uh, uh, the Raiders. Uh, I'm not saying that they're going to come in and just you know pulverize them. But I think so. I think Cincinnati's going to pull out the win. I think it's going to be the biggest blowout of the weekend. So you got Cincinnati, Cincinnati. So that leaves this up to me. Ooh. Not really. Ooh. It's, it's two listen Cincinnati. to this. You're already out. Listen to this. You can, you you can say out. your opinion, but <laughs> you're already voted well, off the well, island. What we're going to do, anyways, is Der- I don't, I'm not a believer in Derek Carr. He's Kirk Cousins. Period. I think. I think. I think Cincinnati beats these guys. I do not believe it's a blowout. Come on, my guy. I don't. I don't. I don't think it's a blowout whatsoever. Um, I think Cincinnati's just too good. I'm not I, until Derek Carr actually. Shows that he has the ability to win big games that are now playoff bound. I'm riding with. I'm even riding with Joe Burrow, who it, just his moxie alone, I think, is going to carry Cincinnati. Uh, That's the first uh, smart thing you real, said this entire podcast. Real, real, I think. real quick, Isaac said um, you just can't count the Raiders team out. They shouldn't have been in the position. Not disrespect the Bengals, but I feel the momentum Raiders have carry them to win 27-24. Raiders. I, I mean, he, he could write. He could be right, but. I, I think it's going to be a close game, it. but I still think Cincinnati's going to pull it out. And it's no disrespect to Oakland. I just feel Cincinnati has a better team. Uh, the moxie is, like you said, and Burrow has right now, the, his demeanor and his, his attitude. They just got more weapons. Yeah, he, but he's I, going to try to prove something. I will say this, because of what Oakland went through this year. Oakland, again, Las Vegas, went through this year. And everything they overcame and they made the playoffs – they, well, that's get a, huge. they get a good Absolutely. coach in there next that's year. Huge. Well, they watch out for them next year because if they can no, do it with that much know. adversity, then man, they could. They, the the sky's yeah, the limit for we them. Ha- next we have year. to. We do still have to put some respect on their name. We've watched the Giants do it numerous times. No, I'm, I'm saying at the right yeah, time. I mean, they, could ride, there, they, they could. could ride that horse. They could clear to a title. Any of these teams can upset anybody, really. But if we're going to go off of what we know, I, me personally, I'm the only one saying it. I think Cincinnati just blows them out. Well, we're taking Cincinnati there, anyways. I think I that's a unanimous decision. That puts Cincinnati Sunday. against uh, we. It's, would you we pick the Patriots? We yeah, pick the Patriots. Way. So Cincinnati against Patri- New England, right? Yeah. So we're gonna move on over to the NFC. We got what I feel will be the biggest blowout in the whole entire playoffs. <laughs> Do not say Dallas. It is. It is definitely going to be Tampa Bay destroying. The Philadelphia Eagles. I do not believe it's even a close game. I'm saying something legitimately like forty to ten. I don't. I don't. I don't see where uh, someone. Exp- you want to? You two can try to explain this to me. I don't see where where Philadelphia even believes they have a chance. The only thing that I could say is, again, it goes back to the the argument we have with Kansas City and Pittsburgh. Is Tampa comes in overconfident, overlooking Philly, thinking you know. And they they mess up. You mean I like think, they did against New Orleans, dude? I think they could. <laughs> I, I mean, think they could come in overconfident and blind, and they're still going to beat this team. This team has no running back, no running game, no receivers, a quarterback that does not throw the ball very well, relies on his legs constantly, and they're facing a run defense that literally shuts everybody down. I don't understand where their offense is going to score. I wouldn't be shocked if they don't score. All I heard from you was this. <laughs> That's all I heard. I don't see where they score. I don't see where they score at. I mean, they're in the playoffs, so at least you know they're a threat. They some, just got beat fifty-one way. to twenty-six. They did to lead into it. They did. I'm gonna tell you, I did. Someone explain to me where they're gonna score. And they did score twenty-six against you. Our third string was in when they started scoring. They still scored. <laughs> they're not. No one's playing third string. Players I'm not. Going pick, I'm not picking the Eagles. I'm picking Tampa Bay, and I feel like Tampa Bay is gonna control this game from kickoff to end, and they're gonna. They, I would agree with you. It's probably going to be a blowout. They're probably going to destroy them. They don't have a chance because the only weapon that anybody can give me from the, the Eagles is Jalen Hurts. Other than that, who are you giving me? Yeah, Nobody. Miles Sanders is never healthy. Right. He can't, and he's not reliable. And so, and Devin, Devontae and Smith receiver, becomes he becomes null and void because they're not Jalen Hurts ain't going to get. Yeah, him they can't the pass the ball. So Devontae Smith is it's it's not even a factor. So I don't. I, I'm I'm going to be 
devil's advocate, I'm going to say that uh, I don't think Philly's going to win, but I don't think it's going to be a blowout. Mm, that's that's not that's you know, that's you don't like blowouts, do you? Yeah, it's not. No, I, I mean, just try to give them a little bit of confidence. <laughs> yeah, well, that's not why we're here for. We're not. We're, we want people to boost. <laughs> yeah, our we're confidence. not trying to be we friendly here. To boost their confidence. Fuck that team. They're getting blown out. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we're we're we're, we're unanimously picking Tampa. Yeah, I think Tampa's I don't. Win. I don't. I don't think that's even remotely a good game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> on to Arizona and the Rams. Just, <laughs> you just skipped over here. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and touch on this one first. Okay. We all know what what the Rams have, and and they we know the firepower that they possess on offense, and we know the kind of defense they have. We know that. We also know that Arizona isn't a slouch team, and no, yes, they went on a skid this year at some point. Yeah, but they're toward the end. They went with nine and 0, 10 and 0, 10 and 0, wasn't it? I think they were nine and zero. Yeah, they finally lost. It's nine, or, right. yeah, it was one of those. Yeah, and uh, I think I don't know. I think on that. I think I think Arizona beats them, and I think it's a close game. I think it's like twenty-one to seventeen, Arizona. I, I and I'm not saying I'm not saying that the Rams can't win. I'm just picking Arizona. I, I'm going to ride the underdog on this one because they are the underdog. I, I just, don't know how I, I don't like know how, how they, big of an like underdog they are. they are. I mean, but they that's are a an division, underdog. That's a division matchup. It I, is. I don't think that they, there's much of an underdog there. They, I mean, they are set as the. It's underdog, It's going to depend. Though. I think Kyler Murray is the X factor. For yeah, him. yeah, it's going to depend how he performs. Right. Yeah, what what version of him do you get? Yeah, what version of Matt Stafford do you get? That's yeah, true. Because I mean, Matt, you have to think Tim about Matt, that. Where's Tim? <laughs> Tim? Oh yeah, we'll bring Tim in this. He's the most biased human being in the world. Uh, what what Matt Matt Stafford yet to win a playoff game? Right. So that's what? True. Who and the Matt Stafford we've seen over the last five weeks is terrible. But that's right. what you know. Isaac, you know, Isaac just said turnovers will be the ultimate factor in the Rams card game. He's absolutely right. It's, yeah. it's going to go both sides. Yeah, I do yes, I think because they both got some firepower. They both got. Good weapons on offense. You know, I think I, I, w- I would think that, uh, and, and I could be wrong, but I think uh, the Rams' defense has got a little more firepower than Arizona's. But who are you picking? Who am I picking to win? Yeah, uh, that's a tough game. That's gonna be a tough. I think that's one. gonna be the tough game. And and, and, and I'm gonna go with. Uh, I'm gonna go with Arizona. Mm. So you guys are leaving me out of this every wow. single time. I'm go with Arizona. <laughs> I don't. I don't think. I don't think Arizona has enough. I think. The Rams, the Rams have were up big on them just a week ago. They allowed them back in in the second half. Wait a minute, I'm gonna change it. I am gonna go with the Rams, and the reason why I I think I just don't think they can stop Cooper Cup. Well, and I think Stafford's gonna come out and play well. Yeah, I I think this is a game where if my brother was listening, he'd probably be happy with us. But I just don't. I can't. I I believe more in the Rams than I do Kyler Murray, and that's even with with Matt Stafford, who hasn't <laughs> proved anything yet, but. I can't go again. I'm not going against the Rams on this one. I think the Rams win it. Close game again. I think it, it's going to be high scoring. I'm, I, I would imagine this is going to be like a 35-31 final. It's going to be high scoring. So we're going Rams in this one? Rams in this one. Okay, now the game of the uh, week. <laughs> the one we've been waiting on, as you all can oh, see. Oh, God. <laughs> this ain't the one we've been waiting on, but this is the scariest one in my eyes. I'm a Dallas fan. Everybody knows that. and Everybody knows the Cowboys really struggle in the playoffs. They have, they have lots of one and dones. So... Uh, I'm going to try to be as unbiased as possible in this. You're going to pick Dallas. And I'm going to say <laughs> that I do not believe in Jimmy Garoppolo, my guy. <laughs> I just ain't going to believe in no Jimmy Garoppolo. Better take that shit elsewhere. I'm picking the Cowboys. I don't care what you guys say. You can hate on me all you want. I think their defense is, is relevant, and their offense is just better. It's not even remotely The only close. thing that concerns me about Dallas is Isaac, what Dak Prescott are you going to get? Which Dak are you getting? That's what scares me. It's not, nothing else scares me. Their defense is solid. Zeke's solid. Um, just, what do you mean? Well, Dak, though, over the last which five games. Which Dak are got, you going to get? Over the last five games, he has like 18 That's touchdowns. Last, what no was picks. before that? It was well, not it's not good. about what's before not that. Good. It's about how you're playing now. Does he go back? It's any given take Sunday. A step back? It's, 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 it's how you're playing now. He played his first seven games were spectacular. He got hurt, played injured, played badly. And then over the last five games, he's one, been one of the best quarterbacks in the league. How many other quarterbacks are you going to, you going to say her name me that's got 18 touchdowns, zero picks? Rodgers. Over the last five games. I think Six it's, games. I think somewhere around there. Rodgers. I don't know how many he threw, but. I don't think he has picks, that many. So I think he's only got 30. He hasn't thrown a pick though. since like week yeah, and 10. Dak also has 37 touchdowns this year. Grayson said 49ers. His Uncle Mike coaches them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> Drew's son thinks I coach him. Jimmy uh, G for the win, Isaac. Said, I, I'm I'm, I'm going to agree with Dallas. I'm going to agree with Isaac on this. I think 49ers going to win it. Whatever. I do. 
Stop. What? I'm Give serious. me a reason. Give why. me a reason why. I just, I just think. He's, see, Mike's getting. He's getting. Oh, he's, he's no, 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 right no. I'm not he's upset. upset. I want to give me a reason why. No, now. that's not upset. I just, it's why. <laughs> why? I mean, I mean, Isaac. <laughs> why, Isaac needs to do the why, same thing. John, why are you picking them? <laughs> Isaac needs to give me the same reason. Why can they? Out, their defense is legit. Dallas Joey Bosa. De- that's Dallas's why. defense is legit. Lyle Collins is back, and then so is Tyrod Smith. So Joey Bosa can eat a big one. They're gonna have their hands full with Joey Bosa. <laughs> um, well, they probably they might. They will. They might. But where? I, I think I I think their defense is going to be play some hell to Dak and them. I mean, Dak's got a good. Supporting that they got the best. Off, they got own, the best but, offense in all of football. You know, so I, I just I'm going I'm going playing Dev. I'm going to go 49ers. Right. But why? I need mean, give me. A, yeah, you're not giving us. Yeah, you're, 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 you're just saying. You're just saying. You're just saying. I want to pick better. against. I want to pick against Mike. You think the 49ers right. defense is better <laughs> than That's the what Dallas? You're doing. No, I, said, I said I think they're going to play better than the offense. Than than Dallas's offense. So, but if they slow on my guy, so so if they slow him down, I'm not saying that. Dallas is going to pick them apart, but if they slow them down, Dallas got the best offense in all of football. So if they slow them down to twenty-one points, okay, they stay, they hold them to twenty-one. Where does new? Where does the Niners score? Because Dallas's defense isn't a pushover defense. No. So where do they do they? So you think they score more points? They can score twenty-four points, twenty-two points over. Very 21. possible. It's possible. What's Dallas's defense weakness? Run or pass? It's both. They're they're they Dallas's defense relies on turnovers. If they don't get turnovers. They don't normally win. They struggle. So San Jimmy, Francisco could do a ball control and run the hell out of that defense. They can try. They're, I mean, <laughs> their 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 run defense is mediocre because they missed Demarcus Lawrence most of the year. He was out most of the year. Their run defense has become better <laughs> since they've all got there. D goes. Um, fun fact: Tom Brady's daughter has held the Lombardi Trophy more than the Cowboys have in the last ten years. <laughs> What are you laughing See, about, Isaac, bro? <laughs> Isaac, right there. The Bengals still haven't won one. I knew you were going to go See, with the Bengals. He gets personal with the The Browns Dallas. haven't won the one. They haven't. I don't okay. give a shit. I'm not getting Isaac, personal. What's I'm not truth? even a Browns fan anymore. I don't care. Isaac said um, Cowboys haven't been consistent enough for you. I don't know which Cowboys team you're going to get. <laughs> Isaac, you are on, you're been, you've been smoking drugs. They scored 50 points two weeks ago and then scored 50 points last week. How much more consistent do you want them to get? You scored fifty points against the Washington's defense. Uh, it's a is it? Oh, okay. So let's just take that away from you guys. Let's take that away. <laughs> How, See, we went through all these games and we was like, all right, all right, all right. All right. And we get to Dallas and you're all like, no, <laughs> no, guys, no. You so can't give me a legitimate guys, answer. So guys, screw you. These guys are they're saying Dallas is, Dallas has been inconsistent. You can't say a team that scored fifty points twice in the last three games is inconsistent. That's laughable. Well, they're looking at the whole year, That's not laughable. the last. Laughable. You keep looking at the last five games. There's a whole season. It's to look not through. about the and beginning of the year. It's not how you start. It's the whole year. We all know that. Okay. How you, it's not how you start. All it's right. how you finish. All right. All right. How is that not true? <laughs> all right. That's crazy. We, anyways, well, then we should have picked, the, we should have picked uh, the Las Vegas hey, Raiders because they've said, been consistent the last uh, five hey, games. Hey, time out. Time Look out. Look at the, the, the Bengals time, were I'm doing. Just saying, I'm that's, just saying. That's, that's, that's what we're talking about. The Bengals are playing just as well. Hey. So you're going to pick them over another team that's playing consistent. If they're both playing consistent, it's hard to pick each one. You remember when he said. You're just upset because I'm not upset at all. I'm not upset at all. He said. about to mute him. He said. Tampa, he was bragging how Tampa was going to demolish Eagles defense because it's awful, right? Right. But he's bragging that they scored because Isaac said it. Okay, Isaac. And the Eagles, really? Yeah, okay, Isaac. Well, then go back to week four when we beat the Eagles 41 21. What's your excuse then? We didn't even go into this much devil than the other well, team. No, that's because what I'm talking these about. Guys, because you're getting upset guys, about it. I'm not. These we, guys are we saying. We even picked it. Dallas and you're still getting upset. Like, the, no, we, we <laughs> picked Dallas. Right. I'm answering Isaac. All so these, if you want to. Uh, no, no, if I. No, said, no, why no, did you no, 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 Come on, my guy. I'm talking to Isaac. <laughs> Isaac ain't on the podcast. Isaac gonna hear from me tomorrow too. You wait. You wait, Isaac. I got your back, Isaac. You got your back. The little popcorn hey, muscles ain't gonna do nothing. <laughs> Dude, I play lockdown defense like Ben Simmons, my guy. Oh God, Isaac. Is that Isaac doing them or Drew? <laughs> Drew D. Uh, anyways, yes, we we have two. We have two to. Th- Two to three, so Dallas. We do. Let's on. move on. You guys can. You know what? I don't. We ain't friends. Because we got to get back to another Dallas game since they're picked. So what's the next? No, game? I'm not gonna be that biased. You're not. Just, <laughs> all right, so we got to get back right, to it. So let's see what we land let's on. Let's do consolation prizes. Where's the Browns at? <laughs> oh <my> God! <laughs> Run it up. <laughs> oh, we played in the Rose Bowl consolation prize participation trophy for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Congratulations that was on your laughable your comments. So yeah, congratulations we're on the participation trophy. To, uh, uh, we're gonna go back to the to, so we got that filled out. So we're gonna go back to Pittsburgh, Tennessee. 
Pittsburgh, Tennessee. What do we got here? John, you start this off. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Tennessee. Tennessee. Oh, so we chose Pittsburgh to beat Kansas City. Is that right? Did you we're on to the next game. Yeah, we're on to the next okay. level. Okay. Pittsburgh versus okay. Tennessee. Oh, I thought. I just Second round. Second round. Um, you know, I'm I'm gonna be, I'm still going to go with, with Pittsburgh on this one. Over Tennessee. I'm going to go with Pittsburgh over Tennessee. The number one seed. I do, well, and because no, I, I, I think... Calm I, down, Mike. I, I think... Didn't, I didn't, no, no, no. I'm, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's not, let's not bring that in here. Oh, Jesus. No I, I hostility. This, no I hostility. I say this because I, if... Uh, well, and it's also going to depend if Henry is able to play. I know they say he is. Yeah, they're, they're saying he is. But why would it depend? Because they've done what they've done without him. So, I mean... They can they can suffice without. Him. I still think either way, with or without him, I, I I'm going to go. And and dude, I'm a Bengals fan, so we all know how I feel about Pittsburgh. I didn't want to pick Pittsburgh, but <laughs> but I did. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to go with them just because I think Ben they're they're going to push for it. So I'm I'm going to go with I'm going to go. With so you still riding the whole? They're God, you're they're coming on, together you're for Big Ben. Like David, this is David versus Goliath. Hey. So. This could yeah, be, it is. Yeah, kind of. He, yeah. he could be predicting a Giants run over the Patriots like they did could twice. Be, so it could go. be possible. Pick your pick your team. Pick your team. He's going Tennessee. <sighs> well, Pittsburgh, Tennessee. I want to go throw up after I do this, but I'm going to go Pittsburgh. So it doesn't really I think their what defense is too much saying? for Tennessee's <laughs> offense. That's what I think. It's defense. Oh, that's why I'm picking. <laughs> Watch out! Bring back Byron Leftwich. <laughs> he's hopefully, Jackson, he's hopefully a he's the next, fan. next coach of Jacksonville. So, um, I also am going to anyway. Let's go on to the next. Game I'm also going to shock we're, we're, you guys, and I'm really going <laughs> to. I think. I think Pittsburgh does have what it takes. They have a, def- a defense that can beat Tennessee. That's hard to overcome. Is that I, I think that they have the capability of actually. I didn't pick them against Kansas City, but when we come into this game, I really believe that the Steelers have what it takes. To beat Tennessee, I, I'm going. I'm going Pittsburgh here. Also, I didn't pick them in the first round, but they're there now. So I, I think I'm going to rely on Pittsburgh here. Yeah, I like Pittsburgh. I mean, I could see Tennessee upsetting them, and it's not an upset. I'd be good with it, but it's not an upset. You're right no. because of the number one seed. Yeah, that would. I can see Tennessee win the game, but I'm picking Pittsburgh. I think Pittsburgh. We're going on. So we're going to go New England, Cincinnati, mm. and that that is going to be mm. that's going to be in Cincinnati. So. Mm. It doesn't really weather doesn't play a factor in this whatsoever. Mm. No, and and, and I mm. think what are you looking <laughs> at me humming for? <laughs> go ahead, John. I, you take I, this one. I'm I'm, I'm going to be biased on this, and I'm going to go Cincinnati, but not because they're would. not because of, of my team, would. but I think Cincinnati has a better team than New England. So we're looking for a new podcast partner now. Yeah, we're <laughs> He, he done started an uproar. See, look, there if you go. notice, our comments haven't went nowhere unless they were talking about the Dallas Cowboys, America's team. Just oh, let it handle it. We've got God. Mark Brunel <sighs> going on right now. Yeah, just let it know. Isaac, I'm coming for you tomorrow. <laughs> um, <laughs> Wes, that running back his name I can't remember. He's got to be talking about Fred Taylor. Fred Taylor. Yeah, <laughs> Fred Taylor. Um, New England, Cincinnati. That's tough. That's tough. Uh, I'd... Go ahead. I ultimately believe New England's defense is too much for Cincinnati. I think they have the I think they have a cornerback in CJ Jackson that is able to handle um what Jamar Chase brings at him. He's arguably one of the best corners in all of football. But you got two other receivers. Um that's that's okay though, but Cincinnati we've done made this clear doesn't have a very good offensive line. So the defensive line in New England is is Matthew Judon is a terror as a terror on that side of the ball. Uh, I just think defense plays a factor in this. It's a really low scoring game. Um, I'm saying something like 17, 13 final, 20 to 10, somewhere around in there. I, I'm leaning, I'm leaning New England. I, I think I got New England here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this down to coaching, and I think Belichick is ahead of Zach. So just based off coaching alone, I'm gonna have to go with New England. Just based off that alone, I think the teams are kind of evenly matched. Um, but I just think just because it's Belichick on the sidelines, that just is a factor. Belichick didn't get him in the playoffs last year. No. But their quarterback's he better. Didn't. But once again, I but said. he's making it all about coaching. But once again, I said, Belichick in the playoffs is another beast. He is another kind of guy. Wasn't they like 7-9 and nine last year, though? So he did coach yeah. the hell out of that team. Right, a with, crappy team. With I'm Cam not taking Newton. it away from Belichick. But I'm, I'm, not, I'm not coach. taking anything away from, I think, I'm, Cincinnati's coach is really good too, but I, I don't I, think they're I just think, there to beat that kind of team. I think team Cincinnati yet. overachieved this year. They did a lot better than what all of us 
all of us predicted. I think the train stops here. Yeah. I think they win a playoff game, which is yeah. great for Cincinnati. Yeah, it's fans. great. It's absolutely great. Um, I just think they run into they're gonna a run into a wall. They run into something that they can't get through. Right. They're not. Zach Taylor's not ready. I think he's just going to be out coached. Yeah, I that's think, he, I think. I think that's what it ultimately. I think that's. that's I think they good got logic. the team to do it, but I think he's just going to get out. I think he's going to get out coached. Yes, I think that's that's true. We'll see. Well, we don't yet. We'll see if they even we'll get that. We're going to get Bell. He wants to make fun of me. We'll we'll see if he does or not. This man give me is on a lot. Oh, you tell me why Belichick's <laughs> better than Zach. You yeah. tell me. Yeah. yeah. This He's man. All I said was this, we'll see. This man <laughs> is mad. Big mad. <laughs> big mad. <laughs> this guy was screaming at me. You tell me why. Hey John. Why? Hey John. So you've been educated. So, so we have in the AFC Championship, we have the Steelers versus the Patriots. We're not picking that game, but that's what we have now. We'll we, get there. We'll we get love there. them buttons, bro. I do. <laughs> um, so let's go over to the other side. Uh, we skipped them the last time. We're going to play them first team this time. Rams versus, Rams versus Cowboys. Mooney, start this out. Well, looking at it, uh, they're kind of, they're, once again, another two teams that are evenly matched, I think. Defensively, I think they're both really good. And offensively, they're both really good. I am going to have to go – I'm going to have to go with Dallas. I think they got the better running back. I think they're going to control the ball better. I think they have the better quarterback. They force turnovers. I think their defense does force turnovers. I think their defense is – both are good. It's just Dallas gets more turnovers than the Rams can get. And I – obviously, once again, I think McVay's going to get out coached as well. I think McCarthy's been there. He's He's there. He's got the team. I think this is this is going to be Dallas all the way. I think they'll lead in the game and they'll never lose the lead. I, I know what he's going to say. He's gonna say, he's gonna say please, I'm gonna, please pick the Rams. Please pick the Rams. <laughs> I, I am going to go with the Rams. Yeah. I don't think Dallas knew him. Defense. Knew him. Why? Knew him. Why? Knew Give him. us a reason, John. <laughs> Why? Why? If, I'd, if I'd have picked the Bengals, this man would have been on my Cowboys. I promise you that one. This man would have been all about the Cowboys. I, I'm 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 going with uh, uh, the Rams because I, I feel like uh, I don't think uh, Dallas's defense is going to be able to stop the passing game. Okay. I'm I'm riding the horse here, bro, and I I really I want to see it. I think the Cowboys nice. are just they're they're just a better team. I think Matt Stafford turns the ball over too much, and the thing is, is the Cowboys force the most turnovers in all the football. So if the Cowboys can force turnovers in this game, I think they can win. I, I think I think if 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 they don't, they they could get upset. They could get beat by the Rams if they don't force no turnovers. I'm basing my pick off. I think Dallas forces Matt Stafford into some bad plays, which ultimately costs him the game. I'll tell you this. I think Dallas's front four on defense is going to be too much for the Rams' offense, but there's an X factor for Dallas, and that is a guy named Micah Parsons. Yes. And that is the reason you, why their defense like a, is going to – Do you have like a crush on him or something? I mean, if I was gay, I would go that <laughs> <Jeez>. way. <laughs> so, we, we, so we got Dallas here. Uh uh, no, what I what I want? I'm, the championship game. I'm, no, I, that, that's no, 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 this, no matter who it is, it could be, it could be the Eagles. I'm picking the Eagles. <laughs> no, this that's something I I think we're gonna see, and I I got I got something for you. I okay. got something for you. Yeah, um, we got Tampa me. Bay, Green Bay. So I, I'm going. Uh, I'm going. I'm going first. That's oh, go what. Ahead, okay, ahead. how come you guys always get? No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead, John. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I think Green Bay's gonna win that. I do. I think Aaron Rodgers has got this chip on his shoulder. I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna win it. The way he's playing, the way Green Bay as a whole is playing, I I just I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna win. And and now you know Brady's only got mainly what two targets now with Evans and Gronk. He lost uh, Godwin's out, and then of course we know you know. I'm with you on that. I don't. Brown, I think you know. I. This is where the injuries play the factor for the Tampa Bay mm-hmm. Buccaneers. I think Aaron Rodgers' offense is just too good. I think he's tired. Of hearing that he isn't on the same level as Tom Brady, yeah, I think and so. this is the chance that he gets to prove to the world he's had a couple, a couple really big choking moments over the last two years. I think Aaron Rodgers has got a different demeanor, and you look I at say, the confidence that he that he has when he comes out every Sunday. The confidence that this dude has, and, and and when they are down, the dude's still calm as a cucumber, man, and goes out there and just plays. I, if 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 the Bucks weren't facing so many injuries. I still think I'd ride 
Tampa Bay to, to beat them. I think that would be an upset. I just don't think they have enough. I don't. Leonard Fournette's not even a not even a known commodity to play. Um, Godwin's out. Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown just caused more turmoil than I've ever seen on one team in a single year, other than when he did it with the Raiders and he didn't even play a game. <laughs> uh, I just think the injuries are just they're just too overwhelming. I think the the Packers are going to handle this one. I think so too. Tampa Bay. I think that Aaron Rodgers is the Peyton Manning of playoffs. He loses too much in the playoffs. And you're facing a guy who has won more games in the playoffs in the history of the playoffs. It's hard to count out Tom Brady, even though they are depleted on offense. Like you guys said, everything's correct. It's just Tom finds a way to win. He he just – He's, he's just like Belichick. He's another beast when it comes to the playoffs. I don't understand how he does it or why he does it, but if I'm going up head-to-head quarterbacks, Tom just finds a way, and I can't. I don't have a lot of faith in Aaron in the playoffs. Hey, make sure that is right because d uh, he said, he was, I think you guys got the teams mixed up. I think it would be Packers versus Rams, Bucks versus Cowboys. Is that right? Did we mess that up? The rankings? Yeah, we did. Actually, yeah, 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 so it's going to go the opposite way. It's going to go um, Rams and Packers, Bucks and Dallas. I, mm. for some odd reason, thought Dallas was a higher seed than Tampa, but they weren't. Yeah, so he, we thanks, thanks for calling that out for us, sir, D. So it's the Rams um, versus who? It's the Rams and Bucks. So are you still picking the Rams? Or, or the, the Rams and the Rams and Packers. Rams and Packers. Bucks, I, Cowboys. I, Rams, uh, I think I take Green Bay over the Rams. I'm taking Green Bay over the Rams. Yeah, I'm taking Green Bay over the Rams. So yeah. we, got, we got Tom Brady. And the Bucks against Cowboys, and it's going to be in Tampa, so it's going to be fair weather. Um, yeah, thanks for calling that out, D. Uh, no, I, I, looked at that, point, I looked at I that would, wrong. I, I, boy, that's a tough oh, one. No, right? now didn't did Dallas? Did they play Dallas? They really? played in the very beginning of the year, and they lost by two points. Dallas yeah. lost. Yes, and that was healthy and, Tampa. I'm, yeah, that was healthy I'm, Tampa. I'm, I'm taking the Cowboys. I don't think. I think it's a close game. I think it's redemption. That's just what it is. I would see. I can, it. I'll go with you. Now. I think Cowboys beat them. They, it's redemption for them, and they have a terrible secondary in um, Tampa. So, Man. yeah, I, I'm gonna go with that. Even with my philosophy, I just put out there against Green Bay. I can't put that same philosophy on Dak. I think the Cowboys. I think, I think at this time, all around are just a better team, but. <sighs> Did you it's say hard. you said Dallas is an all around better team than Tampa? Yeah. Yeah, I think they are. All around. Right hmm. now, I think they're yeah, all around Andrews. better. Um and, all, and possibly even with Godwin in there, and even if they still had Brown, <clears throat> I still think they're probably the better all around. I don't know team. if I agree with that, with all those weapons in there. I mean, there's a lot of weapons in Dallas. Their wide receiving core is loaded. It's so one of the most Gallup, loaded so receiving cores in the NFL. Gallup, mm. Gallup's out though. And plus, deal. plus they got an X factor on offense in Zeke Elliott. I mean, Tony Pollard. T- people, keep, keep, people keep leaving that man alone. Well, no, and, and Tony Pollard. You guys got a two headed monster, just like Cleveland got. And Tampa doesn't have that. You can't rely on Leonard Fournette. He's, he don't. I don't even know. A he's. A, I believe he's a game time decision. He's right. been struggling with a hamstring. And even so, if he was healthy, I'm still saying Dallas's running back field is just insane. So we have Dallas moving on. Yeah. So we have Dallas Green Bay. We have New England Pittsburgh. So we're gonna go New England, Pittsburgh. I think the bust. I think the train stops. I think Ben Roethlisberger rode that out. New England and Bill Belichick. No return to the Super Bowl. No. For I mean, this is how you guys wanted to play out. I'm just gonna let you know that because my pick was the Kansas City Chiefs. But then well, since that this still is puts how, New England in this, there. This, this this is how we no no because I would have they would have lost at some point. Because I would have had Kansas City in the Super Bowl. That was that's my pick to go to the Super Bowl is Kansas City. What? I don't think. I just think that they master Belichick is great, great, great at picking out people's flaws. I think he would send the you house mean when he records them on the sideline. Yeah, I mean, either way, however you got to get them, however you got to get the footage, you get the footage. I just think Ben Roethlisberger, his arm has declined. It has. That is one thing. His arm, his arm is not the same arm. That Hold on a had. second. Hold on. We did bring this up earlier <clears throat> when I said he was on the decline, and he say now you're saying that his arm has depleted, but then again he just threw 
I'm not saying 3,700 yards. Decline. I don't think it's declined because he just threw 3,700. And, and, yeah, about 3,800 yards, which is his average. He threw the same amount of yards. Touchdowns are, are down a little bit, but the completion percentage is right there and the yards are right there. So I don't see where his arm okay, is. Okay, so who do you, you have more faith in? Belichick or Ben Roethlisberger? Well, you're I'm, picking New England. I'm, I got New England. I got New England well, because of how I'm, we're going. You riding the Steelers train still? I'm going to ride the Steelers train still. Oh, you're going to leave it up to me. <clears throat> and, the, and the reason I can't stand New England, let's just put that out there. Uh, nothing against Belichick. I'm just tired of seeing him there. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I just, I think they're going to rally. There's a chance they could rally. So you got, you got Pittsburgh making the Super Bowl. This is wild. <laughs> this is wild to New England and, and dude, New England because of our picks is in the Super Bowl I know. for me. So I, I now if I had my own personal this would not be the layout. <laughs> <laughs> this is what but this is where it's coming. So we have we have a split. Mooney, you need to break the barrier here and see what we put quick and easy. Don't you go for that New England. So you know, with with New England, I always I've been riding Belichick with New England and being a complete team. Um you can't say Steelers don't have a good team. I know their record's not that great, but they're in the playoffs. And they um, have a good coach. You can't. I mean, Mike Tomlin's arguably they one of the Tomlin. better coaches in the league. He is, so. but I mean, he's got to go up against Belichick, <clears throat> one, probably the greatest coach in the history of football. Um, I think Pittsburgh's defense is going to be too much for Mac Jones. Yeah, yeah, boy, get on. I think their defense <laughs> is too much for that rookie. I think this is where the train so we, stops for New England. We have. Pittsburgh. Oh God! I can't believe I said that. Oh. We have, pick, ladies and gentlemen, we have Pittsburgh in the Super Bowl. Uh, you pick, I'm gonna go throw up. I'm gonna throw New up. Eng- or yeah, New England beating Cincinnati, right? Yeah. I, I just that just baffles me, just because I don't see Mac Jones. Doesn't have to be. I I made that clear and said that it wasn't. It was going to be New England's defense is too much. Yeah. I don't think either quarterback plays a factor. And I think Zach is just still a young coach. Like I think I feel like he's going to get out coached. Now in this one you got Tomlin versus Belichick and they're both good coaches. I mean Belichick being a great coach, Tomlin being a very good coach, but new Pittsburgh's defense I feel is just too much for New England for for for, so for have, Jones. Have, I have, think he's a rookie. I think he hits a wall. We I have, mean this we is have Pittsburgh in the Super Bowl. Oh, oh, okay, so here is this Green Bay. <laughs> This is where my philosophy comes in on this. It's Dallas and Green Bay for an NFC Championship game. It's Mike McCarthy coming back. This is an old team. Coming back to play yeah. in Green Bay. Yeah, in Green Bay. With just as talented oh boy. as an uh, – his, his offense is better than Green Bay's. I don't care what anybody says. They can tell me that it's not. It's better than Green Bay's offense. It's now defense. Both teams are relatively weak on certain parts of the ball. As much as I want to go Dallas, I just think Aaron Rodgers makes too many mistakes and Dallas Cowboys are in the Super Bowl. Oh, my God. <laughs> we should have known that this guy was going to pick I was, Dallas. I was not. Come on, my guy. I did, this is where it ran. This is, I think, the, yep. with this, the only way it goes this way is because of how it played out. Drew Ash and, says uh, Dallas can't beat Green Bay. Drew Ash is a Green Bay fan. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I put his last name in there just because yeah. he likes to hear me say yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, they had, my, my brother's a Green Bay fan. So I think we see, I mean, this is the way it played out. This is what this wouldn't have been how I sort of ran it, but this is where this is way, the way it went. I'm going Green Bay. I do not see Dallas beating Green Bay. I do not. Why? I, I just, I think. What gives Green Bay the advantage? Come on, John. Give us a reason. One, they're they're veteran quarterback. <laughs> not that Dak's not a bad quarterback. Don't take it that way. No, Green. He. I know. No, Aaron Rodgers is better than Dak. Uh, I I think Aaron Rodgers plays a huge part in it. Um, I just feel like the way Green Bay's playing and Dallas is playing really good ball here at the end of season two. You're right. They they came on at the right time, but I feel like Green Bay, uh, is gonna. I think they're just gonna outplay him. I I do. And and the coaching. I I think Dallas has a better coach. And McCarthy, I do, but I still think uh, with um, – and, and one thing that does hurt Green Bay is Mccarthy because McCarthy knows Rodgers. You know, I think so that's the X factor. Th- that's that's going to hurt that's, me, but that's I, still, the X factor of this. I, I still think I, I think Green Bay will pull out the win and beat Dallas. I, I just – I do. All right. Money? 
Dallas thrives off turnovers. We've already established that. Talking about the playoffs, they thrive off of turnovers. And Rodgers don't turn the ball over. Rodgers don't turn the ball over. <clears throat> so you're going to have to beat Rodgers trying to get turnovers, which is next to impossible task because the man is just that good. But one person knows how to get him to turn the ball over. Maybe. 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 Yes. yes. I mean, no team Rogers, really ever is able to really accomplish that. And, and like that Drew feat, just even said, if you know if the guy. Rogers' history in the playoffs isn't very good in the NFC. Well, and, and, well, and like it's Drew not, just said, you know, Rogers, not. Rogers ha- has to prove a point, and I do believe that. Oh, I think I, I, I think, think he he's out right to now. prove a point. And he's choked in the NFC Championship game two years in a row. Yeah. And I think you. I mean, well, who? Whether or not they want to see it, I think it happens. But who you got? I'm gonna say. It's great that Dallas made it to the NFC Championship game, but I think Rodgers is too much. So I we think got it's Green Bay. So we got Green Bay and New England. I think this is easy. I no, we got is, Green Bay and the Steelers. Or Steelers. I think this is easy. It's rematch. I guess rematch. I was about to say that. That was that was when Aaron Rodgers won his only Super Bowl was against Steelers. I think, and I think Rodgers wins it again. So do I. I think it's a wash. I don't even think it's a close game. No. And I and no, believe it or not, I had I, I had Green Bay winning the whole Super Bowl anyway, no matter how it went. That's who I. Think I had Kansas City Bowl. beating Dallas in the Super Bowl. I actually had. Oh, of Dallas. course, you would have Dallas in the I Super just, Bowl. I, I actually <laughs> had Dallas winning the Super Bowl. Yeah, so I I just I think Green Bay Green Bay beats up on on the Steelers. Um, oh, Green Bay's too much for the Steelers. Yeah, they're just ultimately too much. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be able to score. Uh, D said, but we all want the Brady versus Belichick. I don't. Of course, I do. I don't. I want it. I, 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 I do. I do, but I don't. Didn't I, we just see that in the regular season? We did, but this is Super Bowl. This is way different. This is this that that right there. No, because I don't. I don't want to see it this year. Why? Because they're going to say Tom Brady. His support. If they lost, Tom Brady's supporting cast was hurt. Oh, so you don't have excuses. That's that's him. what it'll be. It won't be that New England earned it. It would be that they were hurt. I, it, it's impressive that they got there with all the injuries. But what if what Brady was to go in there and beat him with a depleted Tampa team? I mean, it still could happen. I I never once said <clears throat> count Brady out. He's like LeBron right. James. You don't count him out. That's just it is what it is. Right. I, I have a question, and, and it's only because of this subject got brought up. So we have we have Green Bay. Winning the Super Bowl. Winning the Super Bowl. Let me applaud that. So, How's it going? There's an applaud for you, Drew. Green Bay is going to win the Super Bowl. So, uh, since the the Belichick Brady came up, okay, who do we think needs who more? Who needed who more? Did 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 Belichick win because of Brady? Did Brady win because of Belichick? And 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 th- I'm going to throw this out there. I feel like Brady. Do you take Brady and you put him on a team like the Browns? Are the Browns now automatic a? Playoff contender, yes. or, 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 yes. or, or you or you take him yes. and you put him on Detroit. Detroit, yes. Are they or or They're Jacksonville? Do you, are they a playoff team? I had I had this debate with Isaac earlier today, um, which is coincidental that we were talking about with this the again. roster they have. They have to have the. He can't go out and and get people like I, he did in Tampa. I said this to Isaac today at work. If if Tom Brady doesn't go to Tampa. Tom Brady's walking away. Tom Brady doesn't have another Super Bowl. He's walking away. He's retiring at this point. I don't. No, I get that. I agree with you on that. But I, I think I mean, his, just to indulge him on the conversation, just to say, could he take a different team and, and make him a playoff team? My, but I agree with you. If he never went to Tampa, he's out. He's retired. I agree um, with you. Yeah, I think. I think. I don't know. He said he was willing to go to other teams. He, the team he wanted to go to is San Fran. And San Fran said no. They wanted to keep Jimmy. And that's when he liked to go to Tampa. But I don't. I don't wouldn't that? I don't. I don't want to put that out there because I could be wrong. But I think they Tom, also drafted Trey Lance too, though. But but that's, so they wouldn't. That's why they didn't because they, they the thought team, they had their future. But that's the team that he originally yeah, wanted right, to yeah. go to. But so, they so chose, you can't they, say they, that if they, he didn't go to Tampa, he retired because either way, he was no, play no. Game. I don't say that. I'm saying he doesn't have the success. So Brady's riding. My my whole point behind that is Brady's riding the success train right now. Why walk away when that team is still that dominant? Well, that's and, my point behind it. It's not that he he retires two years ago. It's he went to he even said it himself. He only chose Tampa Bay because it made his job a million times right, easier. He had a good at Forty-two years guys. old. We, yes. we, we said it before when when uh, Jameson went in and, and he threw it for what five thousand yards 5, that year. Yards. Th- was it 30 touchdowns, thirty touchdowns, thirty picks, 30 thirty-three but, and thirty? Was it, I knew it was something like that. You know, so he went out and. and he threw for 5,000, so Tom's job was pretty easy. But then, not only did he use the supporting cast he had, he went out and got other people. He went out and got Gronk, and then Fournette came in. Tony O'Brown. You know, yeah, so he, he stacked that team even more. That team 
should be, I mean, literally unstoppable. I mean, I mean last with, year with the, they were. With the weapons they had, but last year, what was their final record? I don't think they got 12 wins. They were 12 and 4, 11 I think they and 5. Were 12 so they four. went on a hot streak towards the end. I think yeah. they won like I seven thought, straight I, games. I thought it was like yeah. 10 and 6. I don't think they went like 10 and 6 last year. I think they were Maybe. 11 and 5, 12 and 4. Somewhere around. They went on, I think they won like their last seven or eight games. They weren't. They weren't a very. They were no, because everybody was knocking Tom at first. Yeah, they were up and down, and then then they came in and win. You know, won. But and and in the Super Bowl, I think if if Mahomes isn't hurt and and everything, I think I think Kansas City wins that game. I've I've said that a million times. I think if he ain't out there playing with what they, I don't know what he had in his big toe, turf toe, or whatever was wrong with it. It was broke. It wasn't right. Both his right and left tackles have to miss the game. I believe wasn't it COVID. I think I can't remember. One, either the right or left tackle got hurt, and I think either one of the right or left tackles went out for COVID. Yeah, so, so I think they were eleven five and second in their division last yeah. year. 11, I knew it was ten six eleven five. I couldn't remember which. You know, so I mean, having what he had, I mean he he didn't really outperform. I mean, yeah, he threw uh, less interceptions than than uh, Jameson did, but I still think he should uh, being the quarterback he is. I think he played should have played better. I mean, he still threw for five thousand yards this year. This year, I'm I'm referring to like yeah. last year or something. Like that. So we have we have green we have we have one more. So what what is your guy well, before we go on to this? What is your guys' verdict when it comes to who needed who? I think I think Brady his first seven eight years needed Belichick. Once he learned Brady's Brady, I don't. I think they they both. They both fed off each other. See, I'm going to disagree with Mooney. I think if you put him in Cleveland or you put him in Detroit, and I'm going to get a lot of crap for this, but I don't think Brady performs. I don't think he's the Brady that they are. I think you see a what is he doesn't have the capability team. to do it. Yeah, he doesn't. That's well, what I, mean. I, I, I think. Can, I can say in Cleveland, the only reason we didn't succeed is because of Baker Mayfield. You put Tom Brady back there, we're in the playoffs. That's it. We have the defense. We have the run. I just don't think you can blame it all on Baker. We've uh, had that discussion before. I don't think you can lay all that cause on Baker. I think I, I've mm. said that a million times. I think Kevin Stefanski has to take some turmoil for this. A I lot of people, well, a lot okay, of Browns well, fans. Well, hold on. Are, I understand what you're saying, and I agree with you if Baker's on the team. If Tom's on the team and what Kevin was doing this year, which was putting the ball in Baker's hands, well, now you got Tom Brady. You can put the ball in his hands, and you're going to succeed. So can you Tom Brady would have thrived with that offense. Baker's not that good, so he didn't thrive. I don't know. I, I just I think if you put him in Cleveland, you put him in Detroit, you put him in Jacksonville. I, think I don't you put, think you see the Tom Brady you see now. I think Tom Brady becomes a average quarterback. I don't think he puts up that. what he has. I, I don't think he does what he does. And I'm not saying Tom Brady's not a good quarterback. I just don't think like the argument with who we thought was the best quarterback, Peyton Manning or whatever. You look at Peyton Manning when he went to to Denver. He didn't go out and try to get other players. He played with the talent they had. And one, yeah, but they were already had. loaded. He didn't need to. But and so was Tampa, though. But he still went out and got more people. He did. You know, I, I'm just saying. I. I think it, but do they win a Super Bowl? Do they win a Super Bowl last year without Antonio Brown and Rob Gronkowski? I said that was the X factor going into that. I said it last year to you, Mooney, that the two players they picked up were going to be the two key clogs to that Super Bowl. I think I mean, Gronk actually, was a big one. I, I think Gronk they, both, they were the best yeah. they were the best of the they were the best two players on offense. But also I mean Fournette was a factor last year for him running the ball. I mean he was. Especially in the playoff time. Fournette was a big deal. Do they win the Super Bowl without Gronk and Brown? No. I, I don't think no. so. No. So But do they make the playoffs? Yes. Do so what what would he have? My this is my argument. What would he have in Cleveland? Because if Leonard Fournette was playing well, which I, we believe he was, so you, you, Nick Chubb would play well. Well, what, what receivers is he throwing to? I don't think Odell would have left. I don't think we would have gotten rid of Odell. And I think he would have used him right. I think he would have got the ball to him. I agree. I don't. I think Odell would still be in town, but who else? Well, the rest of everybody. Well, once again, going back to a receiver can make a, a quarterback. A quarterback can also make receivers, and we've seen that with Tom Brady in New England make receivers better than what they were. So I think he could elevate Cleveland's offense. I think he uses Rashard Higgins more, which oh, I they think put is him good. In the game. I, and so you, you got, think you, you think got Tom Brady, Brady there telling him, "I want this guy on the field." You don't You're not going to not play him. Well, You're going to play him. But what makes you think he's going to put him in? He ain't got no. He don't have no chemistry with these guys. How do you know he gains chemistry with Rashard Higgins? He had to gain chemistry with Mike Evans and, and Chris Godwin, who are by far better receivers. They are. So I'm not going to say they're not. We're not saying Rashard Higgins. Even you don't know if he makes the field. 
I would imagine Tom gets what Tom if, wants. If, but it, <laughs> he if, does. If, he just if, does. He, if he has chemistry with him, he had great chemistry with Baker Mayfield and didn't touch the didn't touch the field. He didn't. So I, I think I lean towards John. I think they're a playoff team. I think they're probably a Super Bowl caliber team with Tom Brady if you replace Tom on Baker. But I don't think Baker Mayfield is the sole problem in Cleveland. I, I never think, said I, he was the sole I, problem. I think it's a, it's a laugh to even think that because the fact that for the first six or seven games, Cleveland, Cleveland's defense was be, below mediocre. It was, not, below. it was not a good defense. No. So no matter what Tom Brady would have did, Baker Mayfield couldn't do it. He had a couple of good games in there, and then the run game took off. I think a little Tom bit. could have outscored the other teams, even with the defense playing mediocre. Baker can't do that. Tom could win the game on his arm. Baker can't. I don't. I don't know if Tom can win the game on his arm right now. I think his receivers are that much better. He legitimately has. When they were all there, he had three of probably the top ten you receivers look at, in all of football. You look at what New Orleans did to him a couple weeks ago when he threw the tab. Remember that. I mean, he didn't look like a. They Tom put Brady. pressure on him. Oh yeah, yeah. They, you put pressure on Brady, and it was showed quite. And this is what I don't get. You remember? Uh, it's been. And you're putting sh- him in a division where defensive lines are issues. Well, and, and you and also has and, and you also have a really good run game. But you put. You, and this is my argument, with Brady. You you go back. Uh, it's been quite a few years ago when they played Miami, and Miami just was in his face all day. And they Miami tore him apart when he played for New England. One thing about Brady, if you get enough in his face. He's one of the worst quarterbacks under pressure. I don't care what anyone says. Unless he can get rid of that ball fast, Brady's yeah, a and then he, don't, he doesn't pressure. have it. He wouldn't have that in Cleveland with that receiving court. <clears throat> None of them receivers, including Odell Beckham, have the ability to get off get off a move you right see, away. The thing is, is that Cleveland is in the AFC North, and they do have great defenses. But we have one of the better lines in the AFC. You also you also helps. have to factor in all the injuries. We're not taking away none of the injuries. No, all the injuries play a factor in Cleveland's horrible success this but year. Also, <laughs> Tom Brady is one of the best at getting the ball out of his hands the quickest in the NFL. The receivers have to get open. I, yeah, they're not getting open yeah. in Cleveland. There's no, no argument. No, there's, no, no, no. They get open. Baker can't pull the trigger. And I've seen this time and time well, again I've also of footage seen. downfield where receivers are open and Baker's not pulling the trigger. Tom pulls the trigger. Yeah, but Kurt, Kevin or Kevin Stefanski doesn't pull the trigger on running the ball either. Well, I've no, also, we don't. I've also seen a lot of the receivers drop balls. Baker puts the ball there and they drop. And they drop have. Yes, They've dropped yes, balls. Yes. Seen that yeah, numerous yeah, times. That's, that's a big issue. Yeah. So, so I, I just – I'm not going to say I'm not trying to take away from anything from Tom Brady. Tom Brady's a good, great quarterback. One of the greatest we've ever seen, obviously. But – I just think if you take him out of a successful system in Tampa, which is what he went to, I don't feel, I don't feel if you put him in a lo- one of these losing teams that's in the bottom, I, I don't feel. And he was smart picking the team he picked. I mean, he really was. I just don't feel <clears throat> that if you put him in Jacksonville or, or or Cleveland or Detroit, that that he's the quarter the the Tom Brady we're used to seeing. I'm well, not saying he doesn't win games. I'm just saying I don't think he's a quarterback we're used to seeing. Well, the difference also with Cleveland is you put Tom Brady on that team, I think Kevin coaches differently because Kevin coached differently with Kirk Cousins than he did Baker Mayfield. So because what he did that year that he he was the offensive coordinator with Kirk Cousins was different than what he did with Baker this year. So I think with Tom in the mix, it's different offense. He's coaching different. So I think he just coached to what he had. So that's, I mean, that's just my take on it. That's just what I saw. But Drew, is it working? But I, I do understand that, you know, Cleveland still is a dumpster fire. So, um, Yeah, so we had, a, we had, we're, we're, we've ran out of time. Um, we, uh, we got our, we got our Super Bowl pick, which it's a bad taste in my mouth with Green Bay Packers. Congratulations. <laughs> um, you did it. Uh <clears throat> We sort of want to. We we had a we had another subject we wanted to get on, but we're gonna we're. I think we're we're pushing an hour and a half. Um, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna continue our topic next week. Our topic next week we really want to talk about who is the ten best players in the NFL right now, um, and that's that's both offensive and defensively. They're going to be sitting, you know, from one to ten. There is not going to be no. This is just offense or this is just defense. It is the ten best players. This t- the ten best players in all of football. So um, next week we will. Next week we will um, ultimately. Um, we will ultimately 
run that and see where it goes from there. Um, so glad you guys, glad you guys came out. Glad you guys heard it, listened to it. Um, really good. We're really hoping that this keeps continuing to go. Um, once again, shout out to Second Born, man. If you guys he haven't heard this, two shows a week. D, that's what we're we're, we're going to get to that. Uh, we're going to try to do two shows, at least minimum two shows a week. Yeah, Tuesday, Tuesdays, and possibly Saturdays. We ran into a few bumps on our on our second Thursday podcast. Um, we will let you guys know through our page. Keep following us, man. Um, you guys can get shout out to Second Born. Listen to his stuff. Let him know. Um, guys, also like and share whenever you whenever you watch our live. Like it, share it, share it out there to get this out there. So. Um, yeah, get, get us out there, guys. It's going to take you guys to push us, man. We want the success. We're driving for the success. We're built for this. We want to do it. It's going to take you guys to share us. We're yeah. sharing like crazy. We need you it's guys. It's not too. on us to be successful. We do what we do, but it's on you guys to tune in, share it, get other people to follow, tell, talk about it, uh, share the links that we put up. The YouTube page will be up and running here very shortly, and we will have a link for it. It'll be on the Facebook page. I'm going to put it on the TikTok page. We're going to send it, I'm going to send it on my personal page. Any of you guys see that, send it out anywhere you can on any platform. Um, you guys are literally the driving force for us. So uh, you put the footwork in for us. We, we do what we do. You guys back us. We appreciate it. So uh, get get us out there more. Um, get on TikTok um, at We're All In Podcast. Get, get on TikTok with us. We will be dropping bunch of clips on there. Um, we are we have the ability now to to cut our clips up and share them out there. We want we want to try to make this as big as possible. Um, this is a learning yeah, learning curve for everybody. We're still learning as we go. Uh, trying to get better at this as we go. So just you know, bear with us and uh, enjoy the ride. Yeah. Um, let it go. Hey man, let it let us know, let us know. We're all out this son of a gun. Let's get the hell out of here, guys. I'm Mike Ash. John Holland. Big country, peace out. Let it ride.